I want to recognize the extraordinary service that uh, Scott Bryson has offered to Canadians for 22 years. Obviously, uh, this will require uh, some changes to our cabinet, and that's uh, something that we're going to be announcing on Monday. After more than two decades in politics, Scott Bryson is bowing out of politics. The Treasury Board President says he won't run for re-election this year and will immediately leave his post in the Prime Minister's Cabinet. That sets the stage for a Cabinet shuffle, likely Justin Trudeau's last chance to set the deck before the federal election. Chris Hall is host of CBC Radio's The House and joins me to walk us all through it. Hey Chris, oh, hey. thank you very much for being here. Uh, do we know just how big the shuffle is going to be on Monday? Um, no, we don't, but we have a pretty good idea. It's no more than a handful of people and the reason for that Vashi is uh, you know most people will understand heading into an election campaign you don't want to leave the impression that somehow your government isn't up to the task uh, that you need to make a wholesale change in order to be re-elected uh, but when you start changing even one seat it's hard sometimes to keep it to just one or two you have to add a few more so he needs to find a minister from Nova Scotia he also needs to find someone to fill that Treasury Board post probably can't be the same person putting a rookie into the Treasury, pro Treasury Board uh, uh, presidency uh, isn't necessarily the best thing and I'll, say why, I'll tell you why. It's not the most high-profile post, but it does control how and when money rolls out, and it's supposed to be responsible for effective spending. So the person needs to have some political skill, needs to have some management skill, preferably both. And the number of people who have those what kinds of attributes... Well, Jim Carr would be one, but he was just shuffled into international trade diversification last summer. Carla Qualtro might be another, but she's at Public Works, but that's a job that's responsible for fixing the malfunctioning Phoenix payroll system. So... Not a lot of names yet, but I think you'll see someone who maybe uh, our, our colleague David Cochran, for example, is suggesting that maybe the person will come from already on the uh, Treasury Board Cabinet Secretariat. My Sorry. Phone. Sorry, let us pause it. for Hello, a second. Here? Yeah, you want to take that call? <laughs> no, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> Some people put her on silent, yeah. Chris. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just, I'm someone's going to call me with a new name. I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 the Prime Minister. He's going to tell us who's going to get Scott Bryson's position. Uh, what about other cabinet ministers? I mean, this is this came as a bit of, of a surprise uh, that Scott Bryson says he told the Prime Minister before Christmas. But are you hearing about the potential for other ministers to say we're not going to run? Yeah, not directly. We actually went through a list of people who have yet to have their formal nominations, and it includes people like Ralph Goodale, who is the public safety minister, Jody Wilson-Raybould, the justice minister, uh, Jean-Yves Duclos, who is social development, Amarjeet Sohi from Alberta, who is the natural resources minister. Um, I'm not hearing that they're not running. They just haven't yet filed their nomination papers or had a formal meeting. Uh, nobody has been put forward to me who's not likely to run again. And in fact, a number of key ministers, like Catherine McKenna at climate change, uh, Carla Qualtro, Jim Carr, people we've already discussed, already nominated. So not expecting a big change. And it's different than it was, for example, in 2015 when we saw a slew of conservative cabinet ministers le leaving. That was after roughly 10 years in power. This time we're looking for only a second mandate and I think that we'll probably see most if not all of the people who are still in cabinet will be running again. Next and, and if there were anybody, if, if anybody was leaving it would have to be fairly soon if the cabinet shuffles Monday. Well, you this is expect, the thing, right? right? If you're going to, you don't want to do this again. So you want to have a final uh, final group in place to go ahead. So unless something dramatic changes between now and Monday, I think, as I said, we're going to see about four or five people, maybe six, and that will be it. All right. Thank you, Chris. Okay, CBC Bashi. Radio's host of the house, Chris Hall. Take my call now. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so why is Scott Bryson leaving politics now and what does he expect to do next? And Scott Bryson joins us now from Halifax. Hi, Mr. Bryson. Nice to see you. Thanks for your time today. Hi, Vashi. It's, it's, it's uh, great to be with you. You've had a few hours, Mr. Bryson, uh, since the decision or since your announcement was made. How, do you, how are you feeling about it? I feel great. Um, I, I have loved serving the people of King's Hands and the people of Canada uh, as Member of Parliament. Um, and also to be part of two Prime Minister's cabinets, Paul Martin's and Prime Minister Trudeau's. Um, and I'm really proud of, of the change that I've helped make and the, and the contribution that I've helped make to um, real progress in Canada. And I'm proud of, of, of Prime Minister Trudeau and our government and what we've done and what we're doing to improve the lives of Canadians. But for me, this is very much a personal decision one that Max and I made together uh, to, to do something else with our lives. Politics isn't just a job. When you're a politician uh, and a minister particularly, but as a, as a, as a politician, you're, it, it really is your life. And, and as such, it's something that your family uh, uh, needs to be included in this decision-making. 
And uh, Max and I, in the weeks leading up to Christmas, uh, really decided that it made a lot of sense for us to focus on our family and to make decisions in our family's interests. And uh, Rose and Claire are four years old now. Actually, they turn five next month. Um, when I entered politics, Vashi, uh, uh, it, it would not have been possible for a family like ours to exist really openly and honestly in, in Canada. I, I didn't have the right to marry the person I loved. Um, I didn't have uh, the, the ability to, to create a family openly like that. And, and so I really have seen in my life a social progress that has resulted from government and leadership. I heard you say in another interview that you informed the Prime Minister uh, just before Christmas or in and around Christmas of your decision. Why, why wait until now to make the formal announcement? Well, I, just before Christmas, I informed the Prime Minister, and we had a nice talk, and, and he totally understands this, and he gave me a big hug. He's got a young family, and he and Sophie are making a lot of sacrifices uh, for, for the, you know, to, to serve the country. Um, and uh, I wanted to give enough notice to the people of King's Hands uh, and to my supporters and the Liberal Party to ensure that they have lots of opportunity to find a great candidate and, and mount a campaign. And I'm confident that uh, they will um, be successful in the next election. They will earn the support of the people of King's Hands. And, and uh, uh, there's been no prime minister uh, who has had the back of Atlanta, Canada and Atlanta Canadians more than Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And um, I, I believe we... Uh, really do have an opportunity to elect a Liberal in 2019 in King's Hands. I wanted to make sure there was ample time for a, a good campaign to be mounted. I know that you say that the, the reason is personal, but you, you had faced some, some questions, some heated questions in the House of Commons in the lead up to uh, Christmas, particularly around the Mark Norman trial. Vice Admiral, Admiral, I'm sorry, Norman, to remind our viewers, is accused of leaking cabinet secrets related to a Davy shipyard contract for a supply ship. Are you leaving because of what may come out in that trial? Absolutely not. That's a non-factor. Uh, that's a matter between uh, the prosecution and, and Vice Admiral Norman. This is a family decision, and uh, my family come first. According to court documents, you had told the RCMP that you were not at the meeting when the decision was made to pause the contracts as Treasury Board President, but you said in the House of Commons that you were. You pointed to your role as Treasury Board President and that it was, you know, you were involved in the decision at all only for... The, the, your kind of your purview of, of being in charge of spending decisions. Which is it? Well, Treasury Board, uh, as Treasury Board President, you have a role at every cabinet committee and at full cabinet to ensure good governance on the expenditure of public funds. And uh, that's exactly what I did then, and that's what I have done as Treasury Board President day in, day out. And, and that's uh, something that I take very seriously. My, my role as Treasury Board President is something that I uh, have done uh, with rigor. Uh, I'm confident that the, the difference I've made in terms of the uh, management of expenditures in the Government of Canada um, and in terms of the employer of the Public Service Treasury Board's an important role, but it doesn't involve a key governance role on the expenditure of public funds. I, I just want to be clear, though, is that the only reason uh, for which you were involved in any of those meetings? Because according to those court documents, you told the RCMP you were not there as Treasury Board President. Um, again, uh, this is a matter uh, between the prosecution and Vice Admiral Norman. And this is a case before the courts. Uh, this is, and, and I, I don't want to comment on that, but Treasury Board, you can go to the website of the Treasury Board and you can see very clearly that uh, public or good management of public funds and governance is a key role of Treasury Board. And I've always done uh, that job as president of the Treasury Board. Are you headed to the private sector next? Um, I expect, oh, I mean, I've been, 
uh, my background is in both investment banking, private equity, and, and uh, as an entrepreneur. Um, I expect that will lead me to the private sector. Um, I love public service, and even if I'm in the private sector, I'm going to find ways that I can help serve the public, in, in, that not necessarily in politics, because I, I don't want to do politics uh, uh, at this time in my life, I, but I, I, I'm confident I'll find other ways to serve the public uh, while having what I believe will be a fulfilling private sector career and having more time with my family. That's something um, I really uh, look forward to. Um, Rose and Claire are for me miracles. I never expected to have kids. And I started a family at the age of 46 and I want to uh, be a really good dad and a good husband and uh, put my family first. And that's what this decision is all about. And in fact, there's a very practical uh, reality, uh, Vashi, and that is that if I ran uh, again in uh, 2019, Max would have shot me and I would be dead and Max would end up in jail and I don't know who would have taken care of Rose and Claire. So that's... Uh, what does that say about the life of a spouse in politics? Well, I, I think spouses have a say in this, and um, <laughs> Max, uh, uh, Max, Max may get tired and sick of seeing so much of me over the coming while. Maybe he'll, he'll want me to change my mind at some point, but it's been 21 and a half years for me, and I've given it 120%, and I've loved it, and now it's time to do something else. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bryson. Best of luck. Appreciate it. Thanks, Fashi. All the best.